Welcome and greetings to all from the OmniX USA team. We are excited and grateful you could join us today for the OmniX educational webinar series designed to empower our customers, you, when making tooling decisions. I'm your host, Michael Stelbaski. Today's topic, Wiper Overview, will be presented by Andrew Sobel and Paul McGowan. The presentation will take 25 minutes, followed by 15 minutes to address your questions. We encourage you to submit your questions at any time during the webinar through the chat box function. We will have a live Q&A session on the cell number provided in our email. Today's agenda will cover six primary points, starting with when to use a wiper, wiper styles, features, materials, pros and cons of alternatives, and lastly, wiper setup. I will now turn the mic over to Andrew Sobel. Thank you, Michael, and thanks everybody for joining us today. A wiper die is used to support and wipe wrinkles out of the inside radius of the bend. Wipers are introduced once wrinkles start to form along the inside radius. This occurs when the mandrel is no longer able to provide enough counteractive force for compression on the inside radius. Let's take a look at a quick video to help illustrate when to use a wiper. This chart is the mandrel and wiper die selection chart. Mandrel and wiper die selection depends on the outer diameter of the tube, wall thickness, and bending radius. Wipers are always used in combination with mandrels. The mandrel's primary job is to maintain shape control of the outside radius of the bend. Mandrels also help maintain support of the inside radius within a limited range of D of bend and wall factors. These applications are highlighted in orange. Again, we start introducing a wiper when the mandrel alone can no longer provide enough control or support of the inside radius. This occurs as the D of bend gets tighter and as the wall factor increases. Generally speaking, any thin wall or closed pitch mandrel bending also requires a wiper die. The OmniX website includes a helpful tool to provide general mandrel and wiper die recommendations per application. The tool is based on the mandrel and wiper die selection chart. You simply plug in the tube OD, wall thickness, and bend radius, and a tool calculates a general mandrel and wiper die recommendation for your application. The tool is available at omnix.com. Go to the tube bending guide, choosing the correct tool, mandrel and wiper die selection. Wiper dies are available in various styles. Square back, holder with insert, rectangle or square, profile or shape, and close approach. We'll take a look at each wiper style in further detail. Square back wiper dies are used for thin wall applications, tight D of bend applications, aerospace bending, highly cosmetic applications, and low to medium volume production. For less than 2D bends, it's recommended to start with a square back wiper die while you optimize the process. For example, you should start with a square back wiper die for a 2D bend with a 150 wall factor, as shown in the orange box. On the other hand, it is okay to use a wiper holder with inserts for less aggressive applications, such as a 2D bend with a 25 wall factor, shown in the purple box. The pros of square back wiper dies are that they provide maximum support of the inside radius. Square back wiper dies can be recut after the tip wears, and they are applicable for any bend radii where a wiper die is recommended. The cons of square back wiper dies are that they are heavy, less cost efficient in terms of replacement costs, or in high volume scenarios when tooling replacement time is taken into account, 
and for optimal performance, square back wiper dies must be repositioned as the tip wears, which introduces variability to the process. Wiper die holders with inserts are used for high volume production, moderate to tight D's of bend, dedicated bender applications, and for bending different tube materials using the same OD and CLR. There are three different styles of wiper holders with inserts with variations in the key configuration and location. The wiper insert design must match the wiper holder design. The pros of wiper holders with inserts are that they are cost efficient in terms of replacement costs and in high volume scenarios when tooling replacement time is taken into account. Wiper holders with inserts reduce setup time and do not need to be repositioned. The cons of wiper holders with inserts are that they are not recommended for tight D of bend applications. Additionally, they are not available for rectangle or square tube, nor for profiles or shapes. Close approach wipers are used for minimizing tube waste, achieving a shorter working length by extending the mounting out behind the wiper and allowing the collet to get closer to the bend die, which, which shortens the required tube length. The pros of close approach wipers are that they are more efficient and result in less waste. The cons of close approach wipers are that they have a higher initial cost and longer lead time compared with standard holders. Additionally, they do not provide as much support as square back wiper dies, nor a standard wiper holder with insert. Rectangle or square and profile or shape wiper dies are used for applications for rectangle or square tubing requiring inside radius support, and for profiles or shaped extrusions that require support of unique features. The pros of square and rectangle wipers are that they keep wrinkles out of the inside radius of the bend. The pros of shape and profile wipers are that they act as a material guide and prevent twisting deformation during the bend. Shape and profile wipers can also be shimmed to allow for minor dimensional variations in the raw material. The cons of rectangle or square and profile or shape wipers are that they are not available as holders with inserts and they may require a longer lead time to produce. Now we will move on to discuss several available wiper die features. Standard cut wipers allow for the operators to make adjustments to the wiper die position. Aerospace cut wiper dies provide increased support on the tip of the wiper by moving the center point of the inside radius cut. This provides full engagement between the wiper die and the bend die tube groove, resulting in a stiffer setup, which allows for more pressure die force. With aerospace cut wipers, you cannot physically position a tip at tangent, which reduces the chance of the wiper tip from being ripped out. Lib or captive lib is a vertical wall that eliminates markings for aerospace and highly cosmetic applications. For standard cut wiper dies, the wiper is machined to enable the use of heel gap or rake, which allows the operator to fine tune the wiper position. For aerospace cut wiper dies, the wiper is machined to fully engage the bend die tube groove, and there is little to no rake applied. Full engagement results in a stiffer setup, allowing for more pressure die force. For standard cut wipers, the tip is set back slightly before tangent to leave room for heel gap or rake during setup. This allows the operator to adjust the wiper position during bending by moving the tip forward as it wears. This adjustment can help extend the usable life of each tooling setup. For aerospace cut wipers, the tip is set back slightly before tangent and the wiper is machined so that the heel fully engages the bend die. This does not allow for rake, nor for the operator to make adjustments as the tip wears. Aerospace cut wipers are an easier setup for operators compared with standard cut wipers. Lip or captive lip is used for aerospace bending and highly cosmetic applications. Lip extends past the tube center line as shown in green in the image towards the middle of the page in order to reduce markings on the top and bottom of the tube. The image on the right hand side does not have the lip feature. The amount of lip is typically 6% of the tube OD 
maxing out around three sixteenths of an inch or just under two hundred thousandths of an inch. As examples, a two inch tube OD would have about one hundred twenty thousandths of an inch of lip. While a five inch tube OD would have three sixteenths of an inch or one hundred eighty seven thousandths of an inch of lip. The wiper die must have the same amount of lip as the bend die in order to properly align with the other tools. Here you can see where the vertical overhang extends past the tube center line, illustrating the lip feature. This helps prevent the tube from popping up or down during bending and effectively eliminates markings. The wiper die material recommendation depends on the type of tube being bent. For bending carbon steel tubes, steel wipers are recommended. For bending copper or aluminum tubes, chromed steel wipers are recommended. For bending stainless steel, inconel, or titanium, aluminum bronze wipers are recommended. For wiper holders with inserts, the wiper insert material follows these same recommendations. Additionally, for wiper holders with inserts, the holders can be made from steel or aluminum bronze material. 4140 is the generally recommended steel for wiper dies. Using a steel wiper die with chrome plating helps to increase lubricity, wear resistance, and strength of the wiper. Chrome wiper dies also reduce markings on the tubes. AB18 is the baseline aluminum bronze material for wipers. ABX is a premium aluminum bronze material for wipers. ABX is significantly more wear resistant versus AB18. Delrin, a type of nylon plastic, is used for highly cosmetic parts to minimize markings on the tubes. And now I will turn the presentation over to Paul McGowan to discuss the proper setup of a wiper. Thank you, Andy. And thank you everyone again for joining us today. I will now be going over and discussing the proper ways of setting up a wiper die. There are various ways of setting up a wiper die. Every machine is different, and this is just a general guideline of how to set up a wiper die on most bending machines. In the example shown, the wiper is set back from tangent and has rake. I will be discussing rake later after my discussions of the wiper setup. Proper wiper setup. One way of setting the wiper die is clamping up on the bend die with a straight tube, leaving it in full clamp position. Now set the wiper die, pushing it into the bend die. The wiper tip should advance forward into this fixed position. You can use a rubber mallet to tap the back of the wiper die or the wiper holder until it sets itself with no rake. Fasten the wiper die firmly onto the mounting, locking the wiper die into position. Move the pressure die to its forward position and fine tune the pressure settings. And if using a standard wiper, cut wiper, you can also apply rake, offset the back end of the wiper from the back of the tube about a 16 to an eighth of an inch. Another way of setting the wiper is to mount the wiper die into place with the bender in the open position without loading the tube. Before tightening down the wiper die, visually confirm the wiper die is properly set back from tangent and use a straight edge or a ruler to verify the wiper is in line with the tube group. Apply rake if needed. Once the wiper die is set into place, fasten down the mounting. Now we are discussing what is rake and when to use rake. As you can see in the, the, the picture shown, what is rake? Rake is an angle added into the wiper in relation to the pressure die to reduce drag. When to use rake? Rake is typically used for bending softer materials, copper, aluminum. Pressure die can pinch the tube rake can reduce the pinch. Rake wipers work quicker than wipers that are set without rake. 
you can use rake on both hard and soft materials if you are getting too much drag. But typically, you do not want to use rake when bending harder materials, stainless, titanium, ink, and L. That was a general overview of how to set up wiper dies. Now we are moving on to wiper tip positioning. This chart is a good reference where the wiper tip should be located behind tangent. To re-illustrate one once more, never set the tip of the wiper at tangent. This will result in a broken tip. This chart attached shows dimensions where the wiper tip should be located behind tangent. You can contact us and get this dimension if needed. We will now move on to the question and answering sessions. You can submit your questions using the Webinar Ninja chat feature or by joining our conference call using the call info on the screen. Thank you.